The title of my uh, uh, presentation is Literacy and Digital Competence in the BCWL, the Basic Competence in Working Life uh, Program. And uh, I will also focus on the um, pedagogical approaches, organization in this program. Um, um, we think that basic skills in reading, writing, numeracy and computer skills are among the factors that have the greatest impact on whether you have a stable connection to the labor market or not. There is a broad uh, agreement in Norway, also on political level, that basic skills are uh, very, very important, that they are uh, basic or decisive for all other uh, training or education, and also for work. And um, the government emphasizes and wants that all adults who need this training they should have this, uh, this training and this possibility to develop and strengthen their basic skills. And um, yeah, this uh, is, as I say, very important to, um, to keep a stable connection to the, to the labor market. And in this respect, the basic uh, competence in uh, working life is very important because the aim of this program is not necessarily to get people into work, but to keep them in working life to, um, to um, avoid that they have to leave working life because they don't cope. So what I'm going to talk about uh, for maybe 45 minutes is this program. I will give you a short introduction. Maybe you have heard about it already during uh, uh, the previous days you've been here. So I will be short. And I will also um, talk about, um, I, um, I call it what we communicate to the teachers in this program, the pedagogical approach, this embedded learning. So um, this, is, um, this is what I'm going to focus on. And if you want to, to ask questions, you can, you can stop me. You don't have to wait till the end. Have you already heard about this program? You know it? Just barely. Go. Okay. It was established in 2006 and um, works as the administrative uh, responsibility for this uh, program that is um, directed uh, towards uh, developing basic skills in working life. So the target group for this program are adults who are connected to work life, who have a job and who have low formal um, education and low a weak uh, basic skills. This is a group that um, very often don't get offers, training offers, very little training offers. They are also a group who often don't seek training on their own. So this program, they, um, they want to reach this, uh, uh, these adults because we know that basic skills and adequate basic skills are so important to keep a, a work um, to, to keep a job or, uh, and they are very, will be very vulnerable. If, there is, if they lose their job, if there is a reorganization, very often they disappear, they go on sick leave because they are afraid they can't cope. So this is very important. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, so this program, the aim is to give the adults this opportunity. And also, we, in Norway, as in your countries, there are changes all the time. There are new demands in working life. You have to, to have digital competence, uh, lots of work processes that are uh, digi uh, digi digitalized, new technology, demands on writing, you have to write reports, if a machine broke, break down, you have to, to write a small report, messages, communication, everything. So, um, and of course this is not only for working life, it's also life in, in general. So, um, yes, the aim, I'm talking about the aim. Um, up till now, uh, about I think about thirty thousand adults have had training through this uh, this program. So it's a um, it's an important uh, important program, and the and the funding and the participation has been increasing every year since this uh, program was established some years ago. Uh, the basic skills that counts in this program is reading, writing, 
digital skills and numeracy. <coughs> These are the basic skills that you have a right to, that you can have training in. Oral skills uh, is not there. But this autumn, um, the government has proposed that oral skills should be a part of it. But this is very unclear yet. Um, so we don't know exactly what this proposal uh, mean. Will it only be for immigrants? It says oral Norwegian. Is that the same thing as our oral skills? These are things we don't know yet. But we know that many, of course, many adults and many Norwegians as well, they need uh, to also strengthen their oral skills. In many workplaces, a lot of communication is oral. So if you are not precise enough, well, there may be misunderstandings. There are security issues. So, and many enterprises, they also, they want, they, they see this, they, that they have this need. So, but until all yet, we don't know exactly what these uh, oral skills mean. So, at the moment, these are the skills you can have training in. Yeah. Um, in Norway, about 400,000 adults, they have low scores. They score, score low in reading and writing. So it's obvious there is a need for training also in Norway. Although the level of education in Norway is quite high, we have quite a large number who don't have adequate uh, competence in basic skills. They cope, but they will be vulnerable if there are big changes uh, in, uh, in their jobs. There are, of course, many young people who quit school without good enough skills. And every year, about uh, more than 5,000 adults they take primary education. But we also know that the majority, they are immigrants. It's hard to reach the, well, the Norwegians. But of course, they are among those 400,000. But we also see that around six, almost 7,000 adults, they get training through this uh, basic competence uh, in working life program. So this is also, the workplace is also uh, an important arena for uh, training in basic skills in, in Norway. So it is an important program. Uh, yeah? The total population of immigrants, how oh. do you know the numbers? Do we know the numbers? Uh, the there, oh, I, the I had the numbers with me yesterday. They're 14% of the population. Yes. Yeah. Yes, but uh, here the is all. These are all, I all think. Yes, York yes. Not yeah, uh, it's not only yes. not only immigrants. No. So we can uh, assume that. Uh, I don't know how how big the. Uh, from them? I don't know really how many from these four hundred thousand. Probably it's more uh, yeah. because. This is this is ten percent or nine percent of the population. Mm. If fourteen percent of the population are yeah. immigrants, but of course statistics are a difficult thing because is a Swedish person an immigrant yes. in Norway? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And they are substantial part of the fourteen, and they are not there because they, if they can read, I would like to write calculate in how um, oh. so many years. Basic math. <laughs> This, uh, we, are we are constantly calculating that also. Yeah. It's a long time. Yeah. Yes, that's long. This is not, uh, it's another thing. Um, this is not in my, what I'm actually going to talk about, but we also work on other re arenas. We work towards the local municipalities as well and the adult um, training centers to, uh, because adults they have a statutory right to um, basic skills training if they need it and if they want it. But um, there are few offers around. There are few adults who actually go to the adult training center to knock on the door. So, so we are working on the, on different arenas. The basic skills program is not the only arena, but it's an important arena. But it's true; it might take some years before we, before we reduce the numbers. And also, um, we need there is a need for training and basic skills. We know that there are people out there who don't have adequate basic skills. Oop. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, and we also know that the basic skills, of course, are not important only for, uh, for, for the job or for doing your job or to keep your job. It, oh, sorry. Uh, I forgot to, to translate. I changed the picture. This is private life. This is uh, education. And this is work. 
okay, you get a, a course in basic Norwegian now. Should we repeat work, private life, and, uh, and training? Yes, this is work, this is educational training, and this is private life. So what I wanted to show that is, of course, the, the training that you get at work in basic skills is uh, work-related uh, training in basic skills. It's not only important, of course, for, for, for the work. It's also important you profit in your private life. If you are a better writer, you can help your children with, uh, with the homework. You can, uh, you can do other things, writing formal letters, complaints, whatever. And as I said uh, initially, it's also the basis for, for, for more training. If you don't have the basic skills, it's, it's difficult to, to, to go for more, more training. So basic. Benefits Sorry? Benefits all there. Yeah, the benefit is all there. It's not, we cannot, it's not, we can't divide the training it's on the work the life. Other. It's, yeah. So, um, and, yeah. <laughs> I um, said so there is a big need in Norway as well, well and, um, and this is the expected development, not only the expected development, but also the development the last decades that the labor market is in transition as well. The, there is less and less demand for unskilled labor. So uh, in some years there will be very, very few jobs, and there al already are a few, uh, few jobs that that you can uh, um, uh, ask for or you can uh, cope where you can cope without having the basic skills so it's also the demand for of, from the society we we need more skilled labor so um, it has fallen since the 1950s and it continues to fall this demand less and less available jobs i suppose this is a development that we see in most countries. And at the same time, as I said also initially, there is um, the working life is in transition. More and more demand for reading and writing. Uh, written documentation, uh, digitalized, also information. There may be not manuals like a book anymore. You have to go to the, to the computer where it's somewhere in the production hall and, and look up for some, some solutions, some manuals. And communication is important. We have had accidents, train accidents, for instance, because there were the, the communication was, uh, was, was bad. And keep up to date, not to fall back. And in this, uh, in this program, I'm now going to, uh, to continue on um, what is the philosophy or the ideology Ideology, ideology. <laughs> in this program, which, which we believe in, and what, is, what we communicate to the teachers. And um, this, the learning activities in this program should be combined with work, and the basic skills training should be linked to job-relevant uh, learning. So we're thinking this dynamic thing that the, 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 the participant or the employers, employees, they come with their experience to, uh, to the learning arena, whether it is in a classroom or maybe also it can be at the workplace, it depends. At some workplaces you can have the training on the workplace, the facilities are there, but it's not always like that. Maybe it's too noisy, you don't have room enough, you don't have computers. So there should be this dynamic between, the, uh, because these are adults with a lot of experience and they take this experience with them and their competence into the learning arena. And and they take the, what they learn back to the, to the workplace. So uh, training, in training in basic skills in this program should be training, training that appreciate the work experience and the work life and also uh, take into account their work life. So building on experience uh, and also contribute to their experience. You, you, you are familiar with the term EBITDA learning, yes. And um, so maybe sometimes if you ask someone working in, say, a factory, in production, ask, do you read at work? No, I don't read at work. I mean, I'm, I'm working at, uh, I'm producing, I'm uh, beer or, <laughs> or whatever. I don't read. 
for, I think for some adults, reading it's like reading books, reading novels, maybe reading papers. But if you take a, a look at, at the workplace, there is a lot of reading. In all workplaces, there is a lot of reading. There are messages on the, on the walls, there are written things everywhere. <coughs> and also reading, um, and this is also what we communicate to the teachers. We visit the workplace, you will find a lot of material there. It's not only what the boss gives you, like uh, um, uh, what he wants the, the employees to, to read, but also these messages, these blackboards or whiteboards where you write things, small, small messages, and security things. And also that reading, we uh, communicate to the teachers, that reading um, at the workplace, it's something else than reading at school. When you read at school, you read something because maybe you're having a test, an exam, you have to memorize, analyze. But reading at work, it's reading because you, you need it. Then you need this information to do your work. You need it here and now. And the same about writing. There's also a, write, a lot of writing at workplaces. It might be blackboard, whiteboards like that. It might be uh, a small message to a colleague or a message to the, to the boss or, uh, or things. But it's a different writing than writing at school when you write a thesis or uh, doing exercises. So it's, it's at the workplace, it's what you need to read yeah, or need to write. And this is also an important part of the, of the teacher training in, in this program, this, that reading and writing means something else. Yes, so why embedded learning? As I already said, the participants, of course, they have uh, experience and they have competence that should be used. Uh, and in the B basic skills, uh, basic competence program, it's also the, the philosophy or the ideology that the training should be customized to what the participants actually need in the workplace. That is the, the, the basis. And we believe also that workplace is an important arena for adult learning. Um, we don't have that much doc documentation on this, I think. It's, I, I'm not quite sure if it's an ideolog ideology or a philosophy or if we have a lot of documentation. But we have some of it, and we have been doing some surveys that tells that um, adults, they, um, they, they want to, to learn at work. And they are at work. I mean, adults, they want to, learn, uh, want to, to, to work, they want to earn money, and they have to earn money, they have families, they have children. They're ne not necessarily prepared to, to go elsewhere and to be a full-time student. It, it's not possible for, for all adults. Am I talking too fast? No? <laughs> I know I often do that. And I, we also think that uh, adults say, and maybe also if you, if you have low formal skills, uh, you have been, haven't been to school for some years, you are not necessarily very confident either when you come into a learning situation. Maybe you haven't been in a learning situation for years and maybe your experience are not too good. And I think it's <coughs> valorizing or it feels good maybe when if you're, the competence you have and the experience you have are, are, um, been, uh, are important and are valorized. Yeah. So we have some surveys that uh, says that adults learn best at work. And also that they, were, they learn better when they collaborate with others, uh, have to find solutions to specific tasks, and also by doing their uh, daily tasks. And there are some, uh, also some theory on this. Knut Illeris is a Danish professor in uh, adult learning. So that adults, as he says, adults want to, 
to see the usefulness of what they learn. What they learn should be useful. And they want to learn to do. They want to, uh, to transfer what they learn into practice as quickly as possible. And this is possible if you have this work-related uh, 